Hey guys, what's up? I'm Andre and today I want to show you how to enable offline mode for your Gatsby sites. But first of all, if you like this video, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Maybe you'll find some other videos that will be interesting for you. You can do that by clicking the link over there. And now let's go to Gatsby. So this is my sample project using Gatsby. It's based on HTML5 template called Phantom and it features one simple index page, few blocks and one additional uh, static page. If you click on one of these links, it will take you to the detailed version of the blog post. So how do we make this website available offline? First of all, what, uh, what you can do is Google for Gatsby offline plugin, which will take you to a page of Gatsby's documentation where you will find the plugin you need to use. So I'm just gonna take this install command and install the plugin into this Gatsby site. So I open the site in Visual Studio Code and I'm just gonna run the command in terminal. And after a cup of coffee, we can uh, adjust the configuration of uh, the Gatsby site. So you see that the basic use is just to uh, note the plugin in the Gatsby config. I'm gonna go ahead and use this extended uh, definition right away and add it to the Gatsby config.js file. So here we have our plugins. I'm just gonna paste it here without the plugins. Uh, the good thing to note here is that you cannot um, test the offline version of your site while uh, serving the pages from the development server. So in order to actually test uh, if the plugin works, you're gonna have to build the whole site and host it either locally using IIS or another development server or uh, deploy it uh, somewhere online like Netlify, for example. Uh, I'm gonna do the first. I'm gonna uh, build the site and host it using IIS. So I'm gonna first build the site. And by building the site, Gatsby actually creates all the static files in a public folder of your Gatsby project folder. The only thing I need to do now is uh, to register this folder as the root of the site in IIS. So this is my Gatsby site. In basic settings, I configured the path, the physical path to the public folder. And when I run the site, I should be able to access it using localhost. And you see the site is up and running. The way how the offline plugin works is that it installs service worker within your browser and the service worker is kind of a middleman between your website and the server. To make sure that your service worker is installed and is working for your site, you can open web development tools and under application and service workers, you will see that the source uh, serviceworker.js is installed for this site, is activated as and is running. The test output of um, the service worker you'll find under console. You see that um, here it's just installed, but if I refresh the page, this is the debugging output of um, the service worker. But we'll get to that. First of all, I wanna show you that these blocks actually go to uh, URLs slash blog slash the URL slug of each blog post. So this is the thing that I wanna have uh, available offline. Now, when you look at IIS, if I stop the site, the site will probably stop working. If I go back to localhost, you see it loads, but nothing is really happening. The reason for that is that the pages are currently not pre-cached. Uh, so let's take a look at how we can change it. I'm gonna go back into Visual Studio Code, into Gatsby config, and I'm gonna change the pre-cache pages for slash blog slash star. And that's the only thing I want I want to have pre-cached. Now let me uh, build the site again. So the site was just built. Uh, first I need to start the site again and then I can access it in the incognito browser using the localhost domain. You see the index page is now working and in the console I can see 
that the work, um, the service worker is now pre-caching 16 files. Let's take a look at what those are. If you look at the newly pre-cached URLs, you will also find that there are blog, hello from new developer evangelist, how to decide on best technology and so on. So these are my blog posts. Now the important thing to note here is that um, it's not the physical pages, the dot, um, .html that are cached, but page data.json. This is something that Gatsby uses to display your pages. So you have to be sure to use link tags in, uh, in your files. If we look at the index.js template here, you see I'm using links. That tells Gatsby to take us to the next page and allows Gatsby to pre-cache all those pages and take them from the JSON files. Otherwise, if you used anchor links, it would go to the server and it would seem like a new request for a completely different resource. So just make sure to always use links that are imported from Gatsby and it will, it will work. So let's take a look at the website. So the page is now, uh, is now available offline, just like the service worker tells us. So what I can do is I can now stop the Gatsby site in IIS. So you see, I'm able to browse the site, even though the server is not providing any data at this point. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to not miss any of the new videos. And if you're on Twitter, you can find me on twitter.com slash underbus. Make sure to follow me and you won't miss a thing. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.